Hello there everyone and welcome back to another episode of Dragon Mania Legends. So before I go into the main thing that I wanted to talk about in this video, I just wanted to say that I have managed to breed the Vortex Dragon here, as you can see by the 1 day 21 hour egg timer right there. But I got this dragon on my 6th try, so he actually didn't take very long either, so that makes two of the basic legendaries that we've managed to breed in a day, so that is pretty damn good. But to breed the Vortex, it actually has a 1.82% chance to breed it, which is quite low to say the least. And I'm lucky because I didn't breed the Regal or anything else, but that is pretty much all that I have to say about him. So we'll look forward to hatching him within the next day or so. But the main thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is just some legendary teams that I feel are some of the best ones with just legendary dragons. Because like the team that I use now, I have two legendaries and an epic because I wanted a few more elements in my team. The only problem with using an epic is obviously that it's always going to have a weakness, whereas legendary dragons obviously don't have any weaknesses. So I've gone through a few just decent legendary teams in general. I'm a massive fan of the wind and earth elements and also the plant and shadow elements. So. I put together a few teams that use most of those elements and one of the first ones was using the reindeer in the first slot followed by the skeleton and the berry dragon and this team has how many elements is that? Two, seven elements altogether like the rest of this, these teams are going to be but it's strong against eight different elements here which is pretty good considering the typings on them and the thing is, if we go on to the, the Burner Pole Breeding Calculator, there's this section to compare teams. And at the bottom, it shows you the stats of your dragon. So if they're green, it means it has high health, high attack for the bottom section. So all three of these dragons have green stats, because most legendaries actually do have extremely high statistics in comparison to epic dragons. Uh, the thing about this team is the fact that I don't like having my water and my wind element on the same dragon. And the reason being that if you, if you need to heal so frequently, you'll probably also need to keep using your wind element quite often. And so having those on the same dragon means you're never really going to be able to use the other tack very often so you'll either be using like every time you're just going to be wind water wind water wind water and sometimes it just brings your team behind so that is more or less the only issue i have with this team but apart from that the berry dragon does insanely high damage and the skeleton dragon pretty much his earth works as a good support and the shadow element on the side is just really really useful because if you have Frightened Speechless on your team as well, then you can hope and pray that you're going to frighten the enemy, and then they won't even be able to attack you. So this is one of the good teams that I would suggest to people. And then a second team would be the Reindeer, Autumn, and Pixel Dragons. The main issue with this team here is the fact that there's no Earth Element, but... If you think that wind is enough to keep your dragons alive, then a team like this would output a crap ton of damage. Like, the Pixel Dragon has quite low health, like really low health for a legendary, but it does have incredibly high attack, especially if you fully upgrade the fire attack, then the Pixel is actually a really good dragon to have on a lot of teams. And the thing about this team here is, even though there's no earth element on it, it's strong versus nine different elements. And that is a grand majority of the elements in the game, surprisingly enough. So this team is all around in general even better than the second team. But that lack of earth element means that you're not going to be able to draw out fights, so you'd either, you'd either have to one-shot 
or two shot or your team would probably just get destroyed like really quickly unless the healing from the water on the reindeer was enough but those are two really good teams but honestly my favorite team out of all of the ones that I could think of going through all the legendary dragons is this one right here with the pixie skeleton and siren dragons because you can start off with the pixie dragons wind element you can stone shield or use the shadow element on the skeleton and then you've still got the healing on the siren dragon if your team still gets low so in general i really really love this team comp like the Siren Dragon does have fire as well, which makes it really good for outputting a lot of damage. Like fire, shadow, and plant are just really good attacks, and each of these dragons actually has one of each of those, so that's actually pretty good. And this team is strong versus eight elements as well, and all green stats for these legendaries as well. So that is... Like this team, I just feel like... It's just a really well-rounded team in general, but the only issue is if the enemy does have metal and they keep putting it on themselves, there's not really a counter to it with this team because there's no metal element on it, there's no energy element on it or anything like that, so you would either have to pass the turns or just attack and hope that you don't take too much damage, but... I don't know, I don't find too many metal teams that where their, el their metal element is the issue. I can't speak. So that is why I really love this team. If I could go back and redo my team, I would probably do it this way around. The only issue is my dragons are too high of a level now for me to sort of go back and redo things. But if I'd have planned it out, and if I had the skeleton dragon yet, this is probably the team comp that I would go for. Maybe when I can level up everything to level 70 we'll try it out one day. And then I, th I have got another team here and this team's a little bit weird because the thing is like I've said I don't really like the metal element all that much but this team does still kind of work. The only thing is it's only strong versus seven different elements so it's not really as well rounded as the others but starting off with the Dark Machine Dragon to weaken everyone with the wind attack, then the second time around he can put on the metal onto the team. And he is pretty much going to work as like one of the best support dragons you can get if you put him in the first slot and he survives until the second round. Because then they are going to be taking so much damage but not dealing anything back if you get what I'm saying. So I feel like this team could really work well. So you'd start off with Wind, then Earth, then probably Plant, then Metal, Shadow, Water is probably the order that you'd want to go in. And I just, I feel like in a lot of situations with this team, I think the Metal could actually work out quite well. And obviously the lack of any weaknesses in this team and all the others makes them just really good in general because they're not going to take any bonus damage or anything like that. But obviously all of these teams are assuming that you have all the legendaries available or you have bred them all or you can afford to level all of them up really high. But like if, if we were in a stupid Dragon Mania notifications, but if we were in a perfect world where everyone could do this, or if you are just planning on what you're going to do in future for a legendary team, these are some of the ones that I would suggest, but like I said, my favourites are probably the left hand team, the reindeer skeleton and berry, and the pixie skeleton and siren dragons. But I am going to be slowly working my way through and breeding each of these dragons. So that is pretty much the gist of things. I didn't include any light or void element legendaries for a reason. I really don't like them that much. Even though I do have co my comet dragon as the main dragon in my party, I don't use the void element anywhere near enough to make it worthwhile. So that is pretty much my reasoning behind that. 
Obviously, if you had an epic in the team, apart from just all legendaries, you're going to have more types. That's obvious. But they have lower stats overall than legendaries. So, like I said, perfect world, perfect teams, perfect levels. This is more or less what you'd be looking for. Uh, I don't really know why I wanted to do a video like this, but I just wanted to kind of take a look at some really cool teams, to be honest with you. But like a team like this is probably what you'd want to be using to finish off Dragon Scale League 1 like frequently to get the reward dragon. But anyway, I think I've rambled on for a little bit too long. Um, I know someone did come up with the idea that if someone gave me their team or a specific team that they had in mind, then I could have a look through it, analyze it and just sort of judge it, I guess, based on how good I think the team would work out for them and whether they should actually use that team in future. And I think that that would be pretty cool, actually, to be able to do stuff like that. And we don't really have many other series going on the channel, so I think that that would be just a more analytical, sort of interesting approach for the select few people that I'd want to watch it. So if you want to do that, if you want to give me your teams, then go ahead, I'll have a look. If you disagree with me, then feel free to tell me why in the comments. But anyway guys, thank you very much for watching, good luck with your breeding, and until next time, I will see you guys then.